so Berto, patron Tara wrote in, and she wants us to talk about the whole Raylo thing, the whole Ray Kylo from Star Wars Episode Seven relationship thing. What we we've talked about it a little oh, bit yeah. already, but there's some other stuff that I feel like maybe we should talk about. What do you say? Yeah, I'm intrigued. Let's do it. This is the Psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. My name is Humberto Castaneda. I study Bigfoot. By the way, this this patron, patron Tara, she's a twenty dollar patron, and remember that at at twenty dollar per month. And for those people at that level, they get their emails read particularly, and they also get an official Psychology in Seattle mug, which I will send to you in the mail. Unless you live outside of the United States, which I have to say makes it very expensive to ship it to you, <laughs> uh, which I actually, be, in, because I didn't say that initially, a lot of our listeners live in other countries and I spent, I don't know, 50 bucks shipping these mugs to you. So <laughs> just it's, so it's like I'm losing money in the, in the thing, but you know, whatever. All right. Patron Tara writes in and says, Dr. Honda, thanks for discussing the online bullying of Raylo fans a few podcasts back. I may not have expressed myself very well in my initial communication. I was trying to ask you what compels people to get online and bully complete strangers over something as insignificant as a fictional relationship like Raylo or Ray and Kylo. Insignificant? You need to go... (laughs) And I mean bully them to the point that some of the Raylo fans close their Tumblr and, and Instagram and other sorts of accounts. Oh, my God. What is going on in society that makes these people think it's okay to tell strangers to kill themselves because of a difference in opinion of something as trivial as a movie? I was just using Star Wars and Raylo as an example of this online behavior. Ah, interesting. So, Berto, what do you think? Well, first of all, uh, I understand the point, but but I mean, I think you cross a line when you when you suggest such a relationship would happen. I think at that point. You know, are you being <laughs> honest? <laughs> no, of course oh. not. No, I mean, um, it is a serious problem. Uh, we've talked about this in the past. Humans uh, are not anywhere capable of evolving their social and uh, other skills that go along with what they do with the tech that we've evolved. So right now we have a situation where kids are growing up in f- dating electronically over, you know, and then arguing and punishing each other and making each other look terribly. And it's it's the way that things go. And then the horrible, horrible, horrible things that can be said with impunity online, yeah. it, there's no shortage of it. Right. And we said in the Psychology of Internet Trolls episode, and I, I don't think I emphasized this enough in this episode when I thought about it after we recorded it, is that if you're a psychopath and a sadist... If you have no empathy for other human beings and you get off making other people suffer, then the internet is your magical, wonderful playground in which you, because if you like to make other people suffer and there is no internet, then you have to go to the Safeway or go to the gas station and try to make someone suffer in person. And those people could have a sledgehammer and hit you over the head. They could have a gun. They could go to the police. Or they could even just even ridicule you to your face and just be like, you are an asshole. Online, there's nothing anyone can do except just comment back. And that's exactly what they want. The comment back indicates they've hurt your feelings. And so sadists and, and psychopaths will go to the internet to purposely get their rocks off by harming other people. And so when there's an opportunity like this, you know, I find that psychopaths and sadists online, they congregate in certain areas. You know, one of the places they congregate is against feminism. You know, most recently it was that African-American woman who was in um, Ghostbusters. Yeah. I can't remember her name. I don't know. Jones, I think is her name. I actually saw her... I was at uh, a comedy club, the Comedy Underground in New York, in Manhattan. Okay. What's the big? What's the one that Louis goes to at the beginning of Louis? Anyway, I don't know. Do you know that show, Louis? Yeah, I do. But I don't. I don't know what what venue. Comedy, co- comedy. Anyway, it's it's the famous comedy club okay. in Manhattan, and it was a great show because she came out. It was before she was on Saturday Night Live. The Noah guy from the Daily Show 
was was on there too oh, okay. before he was on the Daily Show. The Colin Quinn was on it, famous stand. Wow. Um, and what year was this? This was two years ago. Okay. Or a year ago? Two years ago. That's I don't pretty know. recent. Yeah. And the guy from uh, a Trivia Cab or what's that show called? Cash Cab. Do you know Cash no, Cab, I don't the know TV Cash show? Cab. Anyway, that guy. <laughs> anyway, there's just a lot of famous people, and so she was one of them, and. She well, she was hilarious, but anyway, she, you know she has been receiving a ton of psychopathic, sadist, horrible anti-feminist. And why is it? Because Ghostbusters is a beloved movie to a group of people. Yeah, I mean, like me, and they shouldn't have made a movie. But why are they upset at her? Because they right, it makes no sense. I mean, the producers decided to make a movie that had an all-female cast yeah. instead of an all-male cast. This upset a certain group of people but here's the thing people say and so it upset a bunch of people and then what happened i hypothesize is that there was an internet sort of outcry of just like wait so you're gonna remake this movie that i love yeah i don't like that and two you're gonna make it a bunch of women like i don't know this just doesn't feel right and i bet you men and women were both saying that you know what i mean at first they're just like i don't know i love this movie you're you're gonna fuck it up well, then the psychopaths and the sadists, like you, they like, they see, you know, it's like the, the hyenas are chasing the wildebeests. Sure. And then one wildebeest gets a little limp and, and then the hyenas see it and they just pounce because because th- it's an easy target. And they know that if they, if they pounce on this popular sort of dis- disgruntled area, they're yeah. going to get attention. Uh, because if they just go to some random site and start trolling people, they're not necessarily going to get attention. But if they all pounce at the same time, but was know, it also racial? Like, was it because she was black? Or she well, was black? it became about that. Yeah, I, at first it was just because women, and then she became particularly targeted because of the fact I think because of racism and just kind of how she comes across. You know, she she isn't. Uh, I don't know, just the way that she acts, I guess, I you know, in, in, her, in the movie. She comes across as, I don't know, you just it's, just, it's hard to know exactly why. All of them were targeted, but particularly her. And so... By, by the way, because like, I'm not, I'm no stranger, both myself and others that are, and we talked about this before, I get passionate about, you know, entertainment, even though it is just a stupid movie and things like that. Um, because... It's a lot of what our lives are about, you know. Yeah. We we like these movies, and in some way, we were we were talking in a previous episode about how music might be the thing you do in the afterlife, right? Yeah. Well, these are sort of the things we live for, at least some of us, you know. Uh, and so when when you see something that you maybe grew up with or something that you loved even recently, and someone else is trashing it verbally, you want to jump in the fray. Yeah. But there is a big difference between differences of opinion and and even losing respect for someone's opinion things like that to then taking it to this personal right hurtful and scary level right yeah right. and so the things that were saying that were being said to her were just imagine the worst possible thing you could say to an african american woman and times that by 100 that's what they were saying yes. i mean rape yeah. uh, lynching you know just like horrible horrible things yeah. comments on the way she looks you know just just these awful things and the thing that I now interpret after looking at the research and actually being the target of psychopaths and sadists online myself, I interpret that as they're just trying to harm someone. They're not particip- They're not reflecting an opinion. <laughs> you know, their their the initial opinion was don't ruin a movie I love. And then there was also a feminist anti-feminist thing of just like, hey, you know. I, I'm a misogynist, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's not that we're saying, but there was a little bit of some misogynist grumbling. Sure, yeah. But that's a far cry from the stuff that was being said to her, you know? And so I think that when Tara is talking about, like, why are these people telling them to go kill themselves just because that uh, people are, like, wondering maybe Ray and Kylo are going to get together? Well, I think part of it is just this phenomenon that... When there's a limping wildebeest, the, the these sadists online target this wildebeest with their own 
aggression because they just have a need to target somebody and they consider it to be an easy target, you know? Yeah. Uh, because most people, even just casual, you know, I would consider you and me to be big fans, but compared to some people, I think we might be casual fans. Yeah. Cause, cause we're not writing, Absolutely. we're not writing. Cause there's, there's, um, you know, what do you call it? Fiction, fan fiction, fan fiction of, of Ray and Kylo, you know? So even us, you know, we don't like the fact that Raylo is a thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so anyway. The name. Maybe the name is what triggered people. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, so there's that. But another thing I think is that it's upsetting to think that the all good Ray would even think about getting together with the all bad Kylo. I mean, Kylo killed Han Solo, his father. He is a massive dick. And Raylo is like this glorious hero. And so to think about these two people getting together, I think for some people is, is actually kind of upsetting because even though everyone knows these are fictional characters, they're beloved characters. You know, what if Lucas came out with a new movie and Luke or, or say uh, Chewbacca uh, was a, you know, was a Christmas special or something <laughs> and, and he has a, a kid and, you know, uh, and, and C-3PO is dancing. I mean, you're, you're re-traumatized. I mean, what if, what if that happened? You know, you get upset because not, be, not we know these are fictional characters, but they're dear to us, and we don't want them to be. They, we don't. We don't want their images to be ruined by other creations. Yeah, I mean, for for me, is is it's very simple. Um, she's too good looking for him, <laughs> and it's probably triggering for some people because, you know, uh, Kylo is a bully. He's an asshole, right? Yeah. He's he's uh, second in command of the asshole bullies, and to suggest that he's gonna get the girl is to some people triggering to them because it's like wait so the bully is gonna get the girl too even in, in my favorite movie of all time you know but it's funny because I I view him as the like you know first of all he completely reminds me of. The guy in Grandma's Boy, the developer. Yeah. And I actually, I picture Kylo Ren in my mind only as a badass behind the mask, like when he's wearing the mask, but they show complete vulnerability the rest of the time, right? So I picture him as one of those people that would get online and be like, be part of the brigade of, of doom, right? Yeah. So I'm surprised if that were the case, they wouldn't identify with him and be like, oh, Right, okay, and some people do, cool. and some people do, but if you don't, then my guess is is if you're if you're seeing it all black and white, you're thinking of him as the as the villain. Wouldn't Kylo Ren be the kind of person to like vilify the black lady in Ghostbusters online? Of course, yeah, he would literally be that person. <laughs> so she goes on to say, when you and an Umberto talked about Raylo, y'all seem to have no idea why people thought that there might be interesting developments between the two characters, Kylo and Rey. Berto, do you remember? Yeah. You know, so she provided a bunch of links to various different, like a whole bunch of links to various different pieces online and different videos on the Raylo theory. And I have to say, I started to see it. So the first time that patron Tara wrote in about uh-huh. this Raylo thing, I was like, that's dumb. Like, no, that's never going to happen. Sure. There's no, there was no sign of that. There was yeah. no indication of it in episode seven, like it was going to happen. Because yeah. the way she was writing is like, some people are seeing hints of this burgeoning relationship. I was like, what? You know, like you'd really have to be projecting yeah. to see that sort of thing. But she sent me a bunch of links and I started actually wondering if, if it is a, th- if they were, if the writers were actually intending to drop in the foundation so that, when they eventually bring them back together or bring them together, there'll be, it'll make some sense in the beginning moves. You know, like in episode four, five, and six, it makes no sense that Leia and Luke are brother and sister when you look at episode four and the beginning of episode five. Do you know what I mean? Well, it, it, it definitely doesn't make sense that they're brother and sister in four. Yeah. In, in five, I could go either way. Right. Because they even go out of their way to make you think they're kissing, but obviously the whole theme is about her and Han. But she you know? is kissing him, and he goes, "Whoa, that felt good." Well, because they don't know, and if you don't know, it's like you know, you don't but have like a. If you knew, sense. if you knew you were going to make a brother and sister, would you have 
Would you have done that scene? Sure. There's a lot of other ways to do that scene. Sure. Like Leia could have kissed some other dude, you know. No, because I mean? then it makes it a talk of the town by the time you reveal what was going on. Yeah. So, you know, I could see the writers thinking way ahead and thinking, look, we're eventually gonna bring this Raylo thing up. But then they're not doing a good job of it. Well, they, well they're they're not they're not making it obvious. So, but you have to see these you have to see these clips. Well, yeah, but but my point is this. If the, if those clips and that were the truth, then my immediate feedback would be, oh, well, then you guys are screwing it up because most of us will not like that. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but you know, talk about tension, and talk about like, uh, you know, keeping us watching, kind of a thing. And 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 yeah. you know, the whole thing is this to me is if if they decide to do this, the next episode eight. They've really got to make it logical. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, they, I could see yeah. in the in the span of two hours, I could see mm. making it compel, compelling so that the logic by episode nine, it would make sense that they would that they were they were together, I, or I, that or that yeah. they sort of have a romantic thing and one of them dies, or you know but, what I mean. My point is, you can't have it both ways. In this sense, I agree with you. There's a lot of things in Star Wars that when you watch Star Wars and you hope. And you later watch, even uh, when Luke, I, I am your father, right? Uh, I, I I agree with you that I don't think that was set in stone when they filmed the first one. It wasn't and even on you, the draft board. It might have or not. But, but what, what is for sure is the dialogue doesn't support it because the things right. that Ben is saying. But it they are... You're going to really like listen to it and read the transcripts because when you were watching it three years later... You went along. And I mean, I remember at the time I was like, that can't be. No, he's got to be lying. But I still went along with sure. it. Right? Here's the difference. In this case, the claim is that they are the writers are intending it. So now I'm going to scrutinize it and I'm going to say right off the bat, well, then they've already fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I don't know. After I saw the clips that Patron Terror provided, I'm, I'm not... I'm, you know, at first I was more like you, and now I'm like, huh, maybe this is a thing, and maybe it is almost kind of earned. For instance, Patron Terra gives a couple. There's two clips that were, I think, a kind of compelling, kind of, not not entirely, but one scene in which, you know, Ray is being interrogated by Kylo, uh, and you know, they're they they're using the Force against each other, and Raylo Ray's uh, Force is awakened, right, and. So if, if when you watch that scene and you look at it through a certain lens, there is a there is some level of flirtation that's happening. Now looked at through another lens, there's zero flirtation and it's just a you know villain against the hero. But looked at through another lens, there's kind of a bit of a romantic tension there. I, I feel like in a way that's a that's a sexist thing though because if totally if it were two guys, yeah. And now, granted, maybe I'm being a homophobe now. No, because but I, I feel like if it were two guys, no one would have said, "Ooh, I think they might end up together." Right. I th- and I'm glad you brought that up because I think that's a major element here. Yeah. Is that you know when you introduce a female hero yeah somehow she's really got to be the girlfriend of the main guy (laughs) yeah there she's she's got to be the girlfriend of somebody yeah it's like is the thinking and and that's a sexist thought yeah which main character's girlfriend is this right and finn seems kind of weak yeah and so she's not gonna be with finn and who's the most powerful guy plus finn is black you can't mix the races like that which is another i think element to this right is like i assumed finn and ray would end up together I mean, when Finn falls, Ray's yeah. very upset, yes. you know, and I thought, well, you know, eventually they'll come back together at some point. But of course, no one's thinking that because it's like, well, he's a black guy, so, and he's weak, you know, because he... See, I keep thinking, what I'm surprised about the most is that the kind of guys, here's what I would be picturing, that the kind of guys supporting the, the, the kind of guys supporting the theory that, that uh, Ray and um, Kylo end up together would be, in fact the normal sadists and bullies because they'd be like, listen, definitely the black white thing can't happen. Number one, number two, I kind of like this. Uh, I think he's misunderstood. Yeah. And number three, you know, like, and they would go totally. like that. And by the way, <laughs> those people are called the Raylo ship shippers, the Raylo shippers, the Raylo <laughs> shippers. Yeah. So, oh, but I, I'll tell you one thing that does annoy me and that I think probably is a key trigger for some of these sadists. 
the even the label Raylo, what happens is over the last decade, as as you probably know, there were all these relationships in Hollywood and they got labeled <laughs> Benefer and and Shiloh or whatever the hell it is, right? Yeah. And that's a thing. And it's this like kishy little like pop culture thing. And I think as soon as you try to make Star Wars like that, a lot of us get triggered. What would, what would Han and Leia be? Uh, don't even say it. Like, you don't say that. You don't do that. <laughs> Hi, Hilo. Hi, Leia. So, so uh, uh, and she also provided another scene. Leia. Uh, it was a deleted scene from episode seven. At the very end, Finn is getting me- medical attention. Mm-hmm. And Ray is watching. And she seems to be really worried about Finn. Presumably about, you know, Finn's health. A random w- woman walks up to Ray and says... Your friend's going to be just fine. Well, patron Tara says, you can hear the sound of a heartbeat, but Finn isn't hooked up to a heart rate monitor, and Ray doesn't seem to be even focused on Finn in this moment. So what is she focused on? Arguably, Kylo is being medically treated by his men about the same time Finn is being treated at this moment, and she'd like to know what we think about this. What do you think, Birdo? This is a deleted scene. Yeah. So this is a so deleted Ray, so, scene. Yeah. So so Finn or and it, but it might be on the Blu-ray. Who knows? But Finn is Finn is hurt and he's being carted off and Ray is looking concerned. This woman says, "Your friend's gonna be okay." And Ray and honestly, when I saw this scene, I'm like, interesting because Ray's face doesn't seem to be comforted by that. It almost seems like she's not really thinking about Finn again. If you look at it just through a normal lens, everything looks fine and there's no Raylo shipper happening. But when you look at it through the Raylo shipper lens, you're like, huh. Well, I mean, again, if, if the assumption is that uh, the thing that turns women on are psychopaths that nearly kill them, nearly kill their friends, just murdered their own fathers and are trying to ruin the universe, fine. <laughs> but if you think about it from the perspective of, I have now been awakened to a force that I didn't know I had. Yeah. Some mystery of my background is coming back to me. Yeah. My whole existence has shifted f- entirely. And people that I started to l- treat as a father are now dead. That is probably what she was thinking. Yeah. Well, you know, I think we should both rewatch the movie and just think about... <laughs> If if the writers well seriously, because there's there's a scene you know when when Kylo freezes Ray, he could have just walked up to her and killed her, but, but that, he didn't. But that's not because he likes her in that way. That's because he is weak. He is not meant for this. I mean, I think what's going to happen in episode eight is he's going back to what's his name, Snooky. Yeah, and he's gonna you know he's kind of mutilated and he's gonna try to like turn him into a Darth Vader for real. You know, like. Yeah. Uh, roboticize him more, if you will, right? Complete his training. Um, I think there's no question in my mind, at some point, Kylo is is going to fail as a bad guy. He almost failed, but then he didn't because he, he had the strength to kill his father, right? But I think he's ultimately going to fizzle out. And that doesn't mean to me that the fizzling out is going to make him likable. It just means that at, at some point, we may end up with some pity for him but I mean, think about what would he have to do to redeem himself at this point? Oh, he killed Shiloh or Scummy, Scummy, Snooky. No, what does that mean? Well, maybe we learn why he turned to the dark side in the oh, first place. Oh, did you have a bad upbringing? Like, no. <laughs> no. Well, we don't know. You know, the whole Luke thing, they're but a see, big mystery there. Like, if Darth Vader, when he murders the Emperor, if at that point Leia had come up and planted a kiss and be like, I want you, we would have all, like, blown our minds right because we were like there this makes no sense it, like essentially there is no redeem like darth vader's redemption it, at the end of return only gave him enough redemption to die in peace right so maybe that's what happens is my point you know i actually don't agree i think the logical story arc is kylo becomes much stronger in episode eight the, the sure. lot because you, oh, no, you have does. to have a good villain. He does. And my guess is in episode eight, he graduates and becomes very strong and actually like, you know, the first order becomes very strong, 
you know, if because that's the that's that's the typical story arc of a trilogy, right? Yeah. It's like episode two, yeah, yeah. things look very bad at the end of the movie, and then episode three. No, I, I, so I, I might have mistake. I don't. I don't disagree. Like, of course, in episode eight, unless they introduce a new, other than Snook guy, of course we're gonna see him turn even darker. But my point is, he is fundamentally flawed in a way Darth Vader was not as a bad guy. Like Darth Vader's flaw as a bad guy wasn't that he wouldn't be a badass. It was that ultimately he had a weakness for his son, right? And that was just enough to at the very end turn. But that's not his problem. Kylo's problem, he's not a good bad guy. He wishes he could be Darth Vader and he'll never be. Yeah. So I know he's going to get more powerful. In fact, at the beginning of this movie, he seemed unstoppable. Yeah. But he was not. He was was totally fragile. Well, I I think that... You know, given the way that people typically write villains now, is they usually will redeem them at earlier times. You know what I mean? And I think I think there's a possibility that we're going to see some ambiguity. Maybe even Ray will become bad a bad person for a while. You know what I mean? Like or Luke or you know like yeah no. If they want to ruin the whole franchise again, absolutely. <laughs> and listen, let's not forget who he killed. He killed Han. Fucking solo. Yeah, but but you know he was a scoundrel. <laughs> oh, okay. A scruffy savior of the universe. Scruffy nerf herder. Oh, wait, wait. Who's scruffy? <laughs> okay. Well, let's see, see what. Now I'm gonna get online and start. <laughs> I'm gonna start harassing some people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, it's it's like I'm I'm not advocating for either one. I'm just excited to see where this goes. It could be very bad. Rogue One is about to come out. I'm. I, I at first I was very excited for that movie, and after reading some press releases, like they reshot like sixty percent of the scenes recently, and I'm now I'm kind of worried about that movie. The poster looked ridiculous. Did you see the poster? No, I did not. The poster for the initial poster for Rogue One looked like a fifth grade Photoshop. Like literally. When I saw it, I was like, oh, that's a joke. Someone's playing, oh. playing a trick. And, and then I was like, no, <laughs> that's the official poster. Yeah. Stormtroopers are running up a beach. Uh-huh. And then in the background, you see you know, uh, the Death Star. <gasps> I did see that. Yeah, it, you're it, right. That was weak. It just... Anyway. So, um, so I could see it going a lot of different ways. And I don't... You know, I'm just open to what they're going to do. And after seeing episode seven, which I have to say was quite possibly my most ecstatic movie going experience because I went, you know, I said this on the podcast before I watched episodes, uh, four, five and six in a row in the best theater in Seattle with a bunch of super fans the day before opening day, by the way, yeah, there was opening night. This is the day before spent all day. There was a, uh, R2D2. Everyone was in costumes and I had very good suits. I was very close to the front. And then when episode seven came on, it was just this movie going orgasmic experience. And so that'll go down as like, you know, a very great moment for me, (laughs) even though the movie, I think, I think the movie's great, but I had just an amazing experience. So I'm really looking forward to episode eight and nine, but you know, we'll, we'll just have to see what happens. And, and I, I don't know, I trust them to, to write well for this. So, you know, I mean, one, one thing is if you look at, one of the things I, I think worked so well about the original trilogy is that until the return of the Jedi, it wasn't the, the point wasn't the romance. The romance was this additional nice little injection, yeah. little funny quips in the first movie, right. more funny quips in the second movie with a brilliant scene, but it wasn't the whole movie. Yeah. And then return the bad parts are those slow little yeah. moments in the Ewok village with the I love you so much. Yeah. To me, so, uh, uh, the best result, honestly, just out of just my own style of movies that I want to see, is there's no romance at all yeah. moving forward. You know, there's no it's, Raylo. She should get just like Luke had her own arc, his own arc. Yeah, she should get an arc that's less about who she falls in love with and right. more about what the fuck is she doing about her life. You right. Know? And I absolutely can imagine the writers have that in their head. Yeah. They're just like, look, we have a female lead. Let's not fuck it up yeah. by making it about the getting the guy. Yeah. I mean, if if they can figure that out for movies like Frozen, which are made for kids, yeah. then surely these writers who nailed episode seven right. are at least thinking about that. Yeah. All right. Well, that does it for this very strange episode <laughs> of Psychology in Seattle. 
Tara, patron Tara, I hope you're satisfied with our ramblings. Let us know what you think. Thanks for joining us out there. Please take care of yourself because... You deserve it. But does Raylo deserve it? I don't know.